let's rerun this program again so you see the address of that uh, space is 2293468 so this is a unique address but why is there one single address the reason is that because we have four bytes of space or which means we have four blocks this is one byte of uh, space this is one byte of space this is one byte of space and finally this is another byte of space so you can consider this to be a blocks individual blocks with one byte of space now whenever we are referring to the address this integer i as you can see uh, this integer i occupied this four bytes of space and now we have assigned for that entire four byte of space with the name of i we have assigned that name by ourselves so whenever the compiler refers to this i it will always look at the first block or it will always look at the uh, first byte from this entire four byte so if so this is two two nine three four six eight so this is the this will consider or the compiler will actually consider this first byte to be the base address so the next addresses will be something like two two this will be two two nine three four six nine this will be two two nine three uh, 470 this will be 2293471 so whenever it determines the first ad uh, whenever it determines the base address it can then automatically determine the rest of the addresses just by incrementing the value by one or adding one to the last part so this is so the first address has a value of 68 at the uh, last segment of the number so hence the second block will have a value that will be uh, 69 at the last segment of the number or 2293469 and just like that it will uh, one will be added to all of the addresses so what's important is that it's always going to refer to the uh, first address as a base address that's why we only see one single address being printed out when we have refer when we have referred to the address when we have referred to the address of the integer i so it has brought in the first address on our command prompt or it's this or it's actually displaying the first address uh, for the integer variable so let's get back to the let's get back to the scanner function so what we're essentially is, uh, doing in here we are going back to the address of integer i or more precisely we're going back to the base address of this variable called i so we ask for the number we actually display the number first then we ask for the number we type in a message then this kind of function takes the input this is the main function that's responsible for taking the input and sending that to the integer i so what happens is that let's redraw that diagram again so right now this 34 is stored inside this 30 uh, this four bytes of space so when the user uh, assigns or when the user types in 120 then the compiler will go behind the scene and it will refer to this base address or the first block or the address of the first byte then it will automatically erase that 34 or the number that was previously stored and it will erase that from the memory or from the RAM and then it will replace that 34 with 120 that's why when we print that out uh, after we have changed the value of integer I then we can see that we will uh, get a value of 120 uh, in, in, uh, that's being retrieved from the integer I so the actual value inside the memory that's stored uh, as 34 
is being pre uh, cut off or it's being erased off and instead of that 34 120 is replaced in its place so that's why we need this address operator before this integer i so that we can erase off this previous value and instead we can replace it with our user input uh, which, which should be a valid user input so that's how the scanf function is working let me show you the output once more let me rerun this so our actual value right now or the integer i contains the value of 34 currently now it's asking for the value to be printed out on the command prompt so let's print out 120 or let's change the value for now let's do 298 it's a random value you can use any value you want and then let's press enter so the integer value after user input which is 29 our user input has been 29 is being replaced instead of 34 so it uh, 293 is being replaced instead of 34 or 34 is being erased off from the RAM or from the memory and in its place we are placing or we are uh, we are placing 298 inside that four bytes of space now let's head over to get character echo function so the get character echo function is a very interesting one because there is a difference between scanf and get character echo although both of those functions are actually designed to take user input from the command prompt or from any uh, user interface just like we are using this command prompt to take any sort of user input so the command prompt will also take some form of uh, user input using this character get uh, get character echo or get c h e which is the function name and uh, it will store that inside a variable but we don't have to use that address operator uh, immediately right now we're not going to deal with that address operator the address operator uh, is being used only for this kind of function so let's remove this now to have that get character echo function we have to do something like this I uh, no it should be C we have to change C type of character value 